Well, hello, boys and girls, and welcome to the RFES YouTube Bedtime Story. Mr. Holden here with a great story featuring a Black History Month icon. That's somebody who's celebrated, and we definitely celebrate Jackie Robinson. We have a number of stories of his life in the Rogers Forge Library, but you know what? Do you know what he's famous for? He's actually famous for breaking the color barrier in Major League Baseball and becoming the first African-American player in the Major Leagues with the Brooklyn Dodgers. But these stories have to do with things that happened in his life and really cool things that he did, and especially having to do with kids. This one's not about baseball. It's about skating. And the story takes place after he left New York City, where he lived when he played for the Brooklyn Dodgers, and he ended up buying a house out in Connecticut. It's a really neat house and a great story. Written by Sharon Robinson, Jackie's daughter, and a great illustrator and author by the name of Kadir Nelson. They teamed up for a true story about Jackie Robinson, and it's called Testing the Ice in Honor of Black History Month. The year was 1955. Dad was in his ninth season with the Brooklyn Dodgers, and for the third time in four years, they played against the New York Yankees in the World Series. When my father stole home in the first game, Yogi Berra, the Yankee catcher, said... He's out! The umpire, however, said, he's safe. It took seven games, but finally, the Brooklyn Dodgers meet, beat their arch rivals, the New York Yankees. And oh, how we celebrated. Earlier that same year, my family moved from Queens in New York City to Cascade Road in a town called Stamford, Connecticut. Our new house had six acres of land, and it was on a narrow, twisted road that was named for the waterfall that was at the end of the road. The best part, according to my father, was the woods on three sides of the house, which screened us from passing cars and curious strangers. But to my brothers, Jackie Jr. and David and me, the best parts were our new friends, Candy, Willie, and Christy, and the lake that ran from our yard to our neighbor's yard. It was a whole quarter of a mile away. We spent our first summer playing by the lake. We had picnics, we swam, we rode our boats, but no matter how much we begged, my dad would never, ever come into the water. How our friends loved playing inside our house. You see, our playroom had a pool table, its own soda fountain, and a huge gray boulder that was actually built into the wall. And while we took all of it for granted, our friends made a big fuss over dad's trophy room. They stared adoringly at his baseball plaques, his silver baseball bat, the sign baseballs, and dad's bronzed college football cleat. And they asked him questions in ways we never thought to ask. Then one rainy Saturday morning, over a game of Monopoly, they got Dad talking about his historic entry into Major League Baseball. Baseball, like most of America, was segregated, Dad said. Major League Baseball was for whites only. Black and brown skinned players had to play in a league called the Negro Leagues. Some of the greatest baseball players were not white. They were denied entry into the Major Leagues just because of the color of their skin. Finding food worth eating or a restaurant to serve us, that was a big problem. In many places we played, there was no hotel where blacks could stay. That was just the way things were, unfortunately, in 1946, or 1945, I should say, and no one expected them to change. I was playing for the Monarchs when Branch Rickey approached me. He told me he could get me into the Brooklyn Dodgers in the major leagues. I know you're a good ball player, Mr. Ricky Bark, but do you have the guts for this? Well, the next few minutes were tough, as Mr. Ricky warned me that I would be called all kinds of names. I'd be threatened. I'd even be attacked physically. The next question he asked startled me even more. Could I take all of this and control my temper? On that moment, I thought of the doors opening to other black players after me and how the color barrier of baseball would be shattered. There was only one answer. I'll do it, I said. Playing that first spring was tough, especially the game between the Dodgers and the Phillies. Some people were cheering me, but others were shouting insults that were so bad that I had to struggle to keep my temper from exploding. After seven scoreless innings, we got the Phillies out in the eighth, and then it was our turn at bat. I let off. The insults were still coming. I lined one into center field for a single, then I took my lead off first base. I cut out for second. The Phillies pitcher threw wide. The ball bounced past the shortstop. I rounded third base, and I made it all the way home. 
Now that was a sweet victory. We all sat there wide-eyed, listening to his every word. My dad was truly amazing. Guess you showed Mr. Ricky that you had guts, Candy said. Sure did, Jackie Jr. replied proudly. That's why you won the first Rookie of the Year award. That's given to the best first-year player in Major League Baseball. Yeah, and he won the Most Valuable Player award, Willie said. I bet you'll even get into the Hall of Fame someday. Bet Dad wasn't much into bragging, but I did see his lips curl into a smile. Dad retired after the 1956 season in a surprise move that shocked his fans. But he didn't stop there. After baseball, Dad took a job as vice president of a popular coffee company. He wrote books, he walked in protest marches alongside Dr. Martin Luther King, and he raised money for the civil rights movement. And best of all, we got to see him because he was home more. With Dad home, we did more as a family. The lake provided us with the most fun through every season of the year. In the spring, we watched frog eggs hatch into tadpoles. We fished, we rode the boat into sandbanks, and we captured turtles napping in the sun. But Dad stayed dry on the shoreline. In the summer, we challenged ourselves to swim across the width of the lake. But Dad cheered from the safety of the sandy shore. No matter how hard we pressed, Dad always found a reason not to get in the water. In the winter, the lake would freeze. My brothers and I huddled in the living room with our parents as we listened to the eerie sounds it made. It howled and moaned through the night. As the ice thickened, the sounds deepened. We waited, waited nearly a week before popping the big question. We found Dad sitting by the fireplace, reading the newspaper. There was a hot fire. We want to go ice skating, we all shouted together. He looked up into our eager faces. Well, what did your mother say? She said we could, we told him, just as long as you come with us. Now Dad looked anxious. It's below freezing, he reminded us. Then the ice should be good and frozen, Jackie Jr. said. Yes, yeah, strong enough to hold even you, David chimed in. Please, Mr. Robinson, Candy and Willie pleaded together. Christy and I want to practice making figure eights, I added. J Dad smiled proudly. So it's figure eights today, is it, Cher? Yes, I beamed. Yes, Daddy, we've been practicing in our socks. Well, in that case, he said, hiding sheepishly behind his newspaper, I guess we should go. The mad scramble began. We all ran from room to room looking for Dad's gloves, hat, and coat. Then we stood in front of Dad's chairs pleading, making funny faces, and hurry up hand signs until he finally put down the paper. Very slowly, he put on his boots. When Dad was dressed, he led the way, but slowly. We marched behind him, pushing him as we walked out the sliding glass doors, down the back stairs, and down the hill. When we reached the edge of the lake, Dad turned to us and said, Wait. Jackie, David, Candy, Willie, Christy, and I came to a halt. Then he ran into the house and returned with a shovel and a broomstick. As we lined up along the lake's edge, Dad eased onto the snow-covered ice. I grabbed Christy's mittened hand and squeezed. What's wrong? she whispered. I'm scared, I replied as the reality suddenly dawned on me. My dad can't swim. Hmm. Jackie Jr. twisted the cord attached to his sled. David, Candy, and Willie stepped closer to the edge of the lake. Dad went further out. The ice started to crack beneath his feet. He took another step, then cleared the snow from his path with a shovel. From the cleared spot, he was able to tell how thick the ice was. Before he placed one big foot in front of the other, he tapped the ice with a broomstick, testing it for weaknesses or cracks. Tap, tap, tap. Dad took a two, few steps forward. Tap, tap, tap. Then he took a few more steps. But just as he was about to pronounce the ice safe, Boom! A terrible noise roared from below the ice. Dad! I shrieked. I was sure the ice was going to open up and swallow him. Jackie Jr. stood ready to shove his sled to Dad. Dad, Candy, and Willie inched closer to my brother. We waited for what seemed like forever. It was just an air bubble, Dad called out to us as the sound moved down the lake. Dad took a few more steps, tapping as he moved to the deepest part of the lake. He stopped, gave one last tap with his stick, then turned to us and called out, It's safe! Put on your skates! We sheared as loudly as we could, and we skated circles around Dad as he walked back onto solid ground. All I could think was, My dad is the bravest man alive. Now years have passed, and we understand even more how much courage it took for my father to step out on that ice. In fact, Dad showed the same courage on the ice as he did when he broke the color barrier in baseball. No one really knew what would happen. But he felt his way along an untried path, like a blind man tapping for clues. 
That was Jackie Robinson, and that was my dad. Big, heavy, out there alone on the lake, testing the ice to make sure it would be safe for us. And he did it, even though he couldn't swim. And that's the story, testing the ice, a true Jackie Robinson story. So we've heard stories about him celebrating holidays in his neighborhood. Um, we've heard other stories about him in the military and now testing the ice. These are great stories because it really gives a full picture of Jackie Robinson, I feel like. Um, not just the baseball player, but as the person. And he's definitely someone that we really need to look up to uh, as we celebrate Black History Month. Uh, so this book was written, as I said, by his daughter, Sharon Robinson. Pretty cool. Kadir Nelson did a great job. Always a great illustrator and, and, and author as well. Well, that does it for the RFES YouTube bedtime story. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for another great story. And I hope you have a good night's sleep.